Okay, community matters, you know that. I'm Jay Fidel, this is Think Tech. This is Thursday, and there are three magic words. Okay, the first magic word is Roseanne Freitas. It's actually hyphenated. <laughs> <laughs> Second is Lisa Nakao. It's hyphenated okay. too. <laughs> the third one is not hyphenated, it's restaurants. Okay, according to the BBB, bbb.org. The Better Business Bureau of what? Of the Northwest and of Pacific. the Northwest Pacific, yeah. All right, good for you, you guys. You know, I practiced law for, oh God, oh. You know, a long time, uh, and 50 years or something. And uh, we always talked about the BBB because it was an option that we could tell our clients, you know. Mm -hmm. They didn't like the way we're treated as consumers, you know, they go to the BBB. Because the problem is it's, it's hard if the BBB is inundated with complaints, because how much can you do? Suppose I give you a really bad one. You know, I mean, there was a, uh, a piece of glass in my omelet, you know, all right? What do you do? Refer them to counsel. Yeah? Well, actually what we do is we ask them to go online and file their complaint first. So everything has to be in writing. So once that complaint enters into our system, then we, reach, we send the complaint to the business itself. So now the business has that opportunity to respond. Yeah, do they? Yes. They better. Yeah, <laughs> they do. And, and most businesses, especially that value that that customer, will respond. So it begins that dialogue. So now it's, it's a back and forth. So the idea is to hopefully come up with that resolution without having to go to litigation. Yeah. Um, it's not fun for anybody to end up in litigation. So it would be nice if we we're able to resolve that. Um, if we get to that point that after the communication, they aren't able to resolve it, we do actually have um, options for mediation or arbitration ah, ah. that they but can they now take. they agree to, to that. Of course. Right. They don't agree, no soap. Yeah. Right. Correct. Yeah. But it's, it's, a, it's a really good process because most of your, maybe with the exception of the glass and the omelet, uh, most of your issues are really um, communication issues. So it's really having that conversation start that they can actually resolve the issues. Okay, you guys uh, had an article in PBN, what, three weeks ago, a month ago, something like that? Yeah, a couple of weeks yeah, back. Yeah, a couple of weeks back, and that, was, that really caught my eye because uh, you, you were out there reporting on what you had learned, what you were doing on restaurants. So can you summarize it for me, Lisa? What was the article about? Hmm, okay, so it was just um, about what are the industries that people are asking about, expressing concerns about, and... Um, so typically for BBB, we have um, construction industry, real estate industry, um, things that are high ticket items. Mm -hmm. and, but um, it was noticed that restaurant was in that mix, number four um, in number complaint. Four. Number four in terms in the of complaint. communications you'd received. Uh, the uh, complaints. complaints. And then the um, inquiries, it was number 17, but it was Oh, over 8,000 inquiries, um, and the complaints is less than 50. And so just, just to give it perspective. Mm. Um, so people are really asking about the industry, but that was uh, noticed. And so then, give me an example of a question, an inquiry. What is it like what? Uh, you guys serve glass in your omelets? What? <laughs> <laughs> no, people just want to know um, whether they can trust that restaurant, especially for like catering situation when Should I you trust know, the restaurant? Right, because um you're you're taking care of a group of people. And do you have ratings, you know, on the on your website, bbb.org, where you say X restaurant is is a rating of five or four or three or whatever, like like the state health department, right? A, B, C, D, do you have ratings? So we do have ratings um at the Better Business Bureau and they are letter grades. And those are based on looking at businesses, do they have the proper licensing to do business in the state that they are registered? Are they meeting all the standards that need to be met? Are there any issues against them? And then of course we do look at the complaints. Um, complaints won't lower their grades unless you start to really see a, a strong pattern of glass in an omelet, yeah. which is probably not gonna happen. No. However, where we also Only look- Only one would be enough. Yeah, yeah. that would be enough. <laughs> where we do look is, if they do receive a complaint, do they respond? Because that is one of our standards, is their response. So if a business ignores the initial complaint, we do reach out again um, via email. If again they ignore it, we actually reach out via phone call. If they continue to ignore it, that is when it will impact their grade. Because part of our standards is that you must respond to the consumer. Yeah. Now these complaints, <clears throat> 
Um, do they have to be signed by a known person, or can they be whistleblower? Uh, you know, Anonymous? We've heard that term recently. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, um, we, uh, the type of complaints we can take is from customer of our business. So uh, because every complaint we receive, we do reach out to the business, um, usually the principal of the business or principal uh, customer relations person. So if it is not their customer, then they'll tell us. Then we go back to the complainant and ask for proof of marketplace transaction, mm. you know, receipts, contract, something that shows that, you know, you actually had um, interaction with this company. Mm. So that's, that's the system in place. And most of them do cooperate with you, I guess. Yes. yes. I mean, it's silly not to. <laughs> There's no mileage in, in denying the BBB. <laughs> Well, they do value. They value that we are talking about trust in the marketplace. So we're trying to do the right things, and most definitely your legitimate legitimate businesses are most definitely trying to do the right thing. Yeah. So, the, yeah, they'll, they respond to what we send out. Well, let's take my case study with the glass in the eye. <laughs> Sorry to dwell on that. Yeah. It's not something very appealing. No. Okay, so I see the glass in the omelet, and I say to the waiter, you know, glass in my omelet, waiter. And the waiter says, it's, it's uh, not a problem. We, we uh, regularly have glass, you know. We broke... <laughs> We broke some stuff in the kitchen, and we're finding this glass. So, you know, swallow it oh. <laughs> or whatever. You know, it's an unacceptable answer, right? Right. So I appeal to the BBB, uh, and, 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 they, and they say the same thing to you. So do you make a determination then? Is it, this is unacceptable. We can't have restaurants with glass. What do you do? You report it to the Department of Health, for example. Um, do you, uh, what do you do? What are your steps? Okay, so um, well, we look at okay, we look at the response from the business, and then see if they are addressing the issue, the real issue, and they're making good faith effort. And you know, it, it is our process really depends on the voluntary cooperation from the business as well as the customer, right? So if the business is unwilling to uh, take that stance, then we do um, at we have to close that case as unresolved. At that point, we do also um, present the options for consumers or complainant if they want to pursue it further. And so that's what we would do. And mm -hmm. if it is, if it happens to be a regulated industry, you know, regulator might be um, one of the options. But um, so that's, that's how it's done. Now the leverage here though, is that because what we, you know, the, the results, and what we receive and the result of it gets published, it does affect their online reputation, which is really critical for any businesses now because people are finding businesses online and they do read these. Um, well, if these... I'm a banker, I'm going to read it. <laughs> so there was guys at a restaurant that comes to me and says they want a loan. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say, uh, you know, what's your record with the BBB? I'm going to ask that because that's part of my due diligence. Um, and I suppose anyone else. I mean, for example, was the thing in PBN, speaking of PBN a couple of weeks ago, where there's a restaurant turnkey for sale, turnkey for sale, which means you get it lock, stock, and barrel. Ooh, that's a great term. And <laughs> you get it with the trade name, you get it with the staff, presumably, you get it with the inventory and, and, the, and the tables and chairs and, and um, cooking, all that stuff. Okay? And so the next day after the transaction, um, the guys running the restaurant is different, but everything in the restaurant is the same as it was the day before. Okay, if I'm that buyer, I'm going to want to talk to you guys. I'm going to want to see everything. I'm going to want, I'm going to, want to take advantage of your due diligence that you made. Now, is your file open to me? Can I come into your office and say, excuse me, Roseanne, I'd like to see your file on the ABC restaurant. I shouldn't say ABC. We had a store by that name. Yeah. But let's say XYZ <laughs> restaurant. <laughs> so our... Um, what Lisa mentioned as far as the, the back and forth, all of that is actually online for the public to see. It will remove names. However, the actual back and forth between the business and the consumer is there for everybody in the public. No names, though. No names. No. You have the names. Yes. That's in another file. Yeah, correct. Can I see that file? Um, no, that, uh, well, if, if you... You don't want to be sued. You know, because there's always the possibility that some um, you know, some lawyer will um, will uh, will find a defamation claim. I mean, that, that has to happen. Uh, he doesn't agree with your analysis or your process, and 
and he, he wants to take a run at you, um, that's got to happen. But so uh, you got to be careful. Um, yeah. Right. So, you know, we, we do want to um, protect the privacy rights of the people. And so, um, you know, so if it is in litigation and then if there's a subpoena, okay, of course, we comply with that request. Gee, that's it sounds like Congress. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that well, we're hoping to avoid all of that. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> yeah, okay, well, I, mean, I can see that. I can see that. For example, if I make my complaint, although it's, it's known to you, it's not a whistleblower to you, um, you know, I don't really want you to give my name out to the restaurant or, or, or business. I mean, may, but not without my consent. Yeah. Oh, very interesting. Um, <clears throat> now, what about, what about visiting the premises? So they say this restaurant has a problem. Um, and uh, I mean, if it, was, if it was me doing due diligence, I would say, well, I got to go look. I got to see. I got to see the health department sticker in the window. Mm -hmm. uh, I got to see what it looks like. I got to see where they wear hairnets over the frying pan or whatever. You know, I want. I want to see how this place works. I want to go. Be here's the question. I want to go beyond the complaint. We have a show called Beyond the Line. Oh. Uh, this is beyond the complaint. complaint. Okay. So do you do you go beyond the complaint? Do you visit? Do you ask questions that go you know, outside the four corners of the complaint. Hmm. I think on that one, we're not going to necessarily go to the business and make sure they're wearing the netting and all that, because that would be the health department's issue. We are going to look to the health department, make sure that they do have the compliance that's needed, because that's, that's our side of what we do. We're making sure that they're doing everything that's required for, especially in a regulated industry like that. So yes, we're going to look to make sure they have a passing score, but we don't necessarily have to go in and make sure everybody's wearing a net and things like that. When you go, do you go cognito or incognito? Do you wear a little Groucho Marx outfit and a slouch hat? <laughs> I actually have never been a secret <laughs> shopper, but I believe uh, Lisa has done a few of those. Do you go with a slouch hat? Oh, no. <laughs> I go as I am, but um, so, uh, no. You know, I got all these shows on television, you know, right. the guys with the FBI, and he takes his, you know, his wallet no, out of his pocket, and shows the FBI. <laughs> Lisa goes, and she takes her wallet out of her and says, BBB, watch out, you guys. And they jump three feet high, right? <laughs> no, we are about transparency. So yeah. if we are going to visit, we, we do go visit, and then, you know, it's just uh, disclose who we are, why we're there, and, and so Roseanne and also um, goes out and meet with different businesses too. In you the talk community. to them. Yes. yes. You don't just walk around, you talk to them. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And you tell them what the situation is, and um, they, you, you get a response, and you write it down. Well, from a complaint standpoint, we would there is a direct team that deals with that. Yeah. So that wouldn't be on my end of it. Yeah. Um, but they, you know, they're going to do the due diligence, diligence back and forth. But if they've received, like especially here in Hawaii, where we have that pass fill score, the cards, the green, the um, yeah, yeah. and the red, they're going to have to prove once that has been brought to attention that they have passed. So, so they show it to you. Well, they, it's supposed to be posted anyway. Yeah, correct. There was so, one guy in the paper recently. Didn't he took it down? He thought that would be smart, and they fined him for taking it down. Oh, it's right. a substantial fine. Correct. Yeah. Right. Because it's to protect the consumer. And it, that's why industries like the restaurant industry are regulated, so that the, the actual consumer is protected. And so the businesses that are doing it right, you really want to applaud them, because they are following what is, is out there and, is, and meets the standards. OK, you guys, we're going to take a short break. Okay. And then we're going to come back, and we're going to talk about exactly how this works on a macro scale. I'm going to be asking you about what your jurisdiction is in terms of the islands, okay, and how you, how you deal with complaints on other islands and inquiries. I'm going to ask you this big question. Do people ever call you, don't answer now, do people ever call you and say, that was a great restaurant. I want you guys to give them a double plus A. Don't answer. We'll be right back after this short break. Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, host of Beyond the Lines. I was the head coach for the Punahou Boys varsity tennis team for 22 years, and we we're fortunate to win 22 consecutive state championships. This show is based on my book, which is also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about leadership, creating a superior culture of excellence, achieving and sustaining success, and finding greatness. If you're a student, parent, sports or business person, and want to improve your life and the lives of people around you, Tune in and join me on Mondays at 11 a.m. as we go beyond the lines on Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha. Aloha. I'm Keisha King, host of At the Crossroads, 
where we have conversations that are real and relevant. We have spoken with community leaders from right here locally in Hawaii and all around the world. Won't you join us on thinktechhawaii.com or on YouTube on the Think Tech Hawaii channel. Our conversations are real, relevant, and lots of fun. I'll see you at the crossroads. Aloha. Okay, we're back. Okay, this is Roseanne Freitas of Lisa Nakao, and we're talking about the BBB.org. That is the Better Business Bureau of the Pacific Northwest. Of the Northwest and Northwest, Pacific. Northwest. Northwest. And Pacific. Pacific. Oh, and Pacific, okay. Okay. So, we had a cliffhanger, and you, and you told me that you had the answer, Roseanne. Answer. My cliffhanger question was, to people that were calling you and say, what a great restaurant. Can you give them a star or something? Because I really had a good time there, and I want everybody to know. Does that happen? So what we do is we do get reviews. So for our, our, our accredited businesses with Better Business Bureau, they can go online and leave that company a review. And we do recommend they do that because we know, especially in the restaurant industry, we know that over 60% of people look online to research a restaurant. So they can, we're not just the complaint people, we actually do, they can put a review on for our accredited businesses. Sort of a, 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 a two-sided Yelp. We, exa we are most definitely about promoting good business, but we're also about resolution. Yeah. So it's not just having a complaint, but it's actually trying to resolve that complaint. Yeah. Okay, let's make some comparisons. You know, I shop on Amazon, and, I'm, and we do a lot with B&H Photo, if you haven't heard of them in New York City. And there are various other, you know, internet. You know, what, you know, what is Amazon has 40% of the retail in the country. I mean, amazing, okay? Um, and with Amazon, you can, and I do, and don't you, uh, look up, what people say, and you know, they have five stars or something, and you can see what the stars are saying, whether they're, you know, positive or negative or in the middle, and and, and you learn a lot about the the, the product of the place, the service, um, by looking at the comments when people leave. But it's numerical, um, and and I'll go a step further. eBay, right, which is all about trust, it's making the buyer trust the seller and the seller trust the buyer and all that. Um, same thing, stars. You rate things and people right. and service and cooperation and all everything, you know. And then you leave a, a review. And uh, then I can go on there and I can either trust or not based on the number of stars. It's numerical. Okay, now if I go on to BBB, first question is, these reviews, are they anonymous or uh, anonymous? Or anonymous? <laughs> <laughs> Great question. <laughs> okay, so um, people do um, you know submit it on the they give us name and but how we um, try to make sure that it is from the actual customer of the business that's that's who we, who we see want if to I use. have a pizza parlor over uh -huh. here mm -hmm. okay and then there's a pizza parlor down the street right nothing I'd like more than to send you a few choice remarks about the pizza parlor right. down the street and tell you it's junk. <laughs> okay, and if, if I can do that, I can have a, a real effect thanks to the BBB. You don't want that, though. No. Thank you for asking that, because that is a great question. Right. So, so Lisa will tell you how it goes through that process so that we make sure that your competitor is not doing that to you. <laughs> right. So when we receive reviews, so we, we do notify the business owner, owner to let, to, so that they can review it and then let us know if it is not their customer. Um, sort of a verifi verification. Right. Yeah. So first step really is um, verification that you're human. So um, there's an email verification process. Then there no there's a notice to the business to verify your customer. If they come back and say, this is not my customer, then we go back to the reviewer and ask for proof. Mm -hmm. um, or we, and also we have a system in place now, somewhat of a filter that detects um, bot or fake. Reviews. Who are fake reviews. Uh, right. And fake so, news, fake reviews. Right. So. so when the score for that is quite high, we our staff actually call the reviewer to make sure that review actually came from okay. the actual person. Suppose that when you call a reviewer, he has a heavy Russian accent. <laughs> <laughs> and the number has an area code for Moscow. Mm -hmm. I'm only kidding. I'm just joking. <laughs> I think it's the wrong program. <laughs> 
So, okay, so, so you now you have all these reviewers, and they put stars in, they put metrics that say, you know, there's a five star, four star, three star kind of thing. Do they do that? And if they do do that, um, do you aggregate those numbers and say, well, a restaurant X, y, XYZ has a composite you know, rating of the average of four or five stars. You do that. Can I find, as I could on eBay, uh, a composite number, or on Amazon, a composite number uh, that re represents an average of everybody? On our website, you can. So it will show, what, it's a star system, um, and you'll be able to see that. And then below that, we'll actually have all the reviews. So you can actually read them as well. Good and bad. Exactly. What happens is, you know, it's always interests me on these <clears throat> Amazon type websites where the guy puts one star in, one star. And then he goes on for a review that is, that is, that is merciless. He just blows them up. Why did he put the one star in? Well, because he had to put some stars. Right. The, 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 this, the website required him to put in some stars, so he puts in one. You know, it's like, can you do that? I mean, do you, do you have to put a star in? Or you can say, I'm not going to put a star in. I'm just going to tell you how bad it is. Um, you, actually, it does require you to put a star, but people do make sure that they ex express that sentiment in their comment, which is posted along with the star, so you can, you can see that. And the star rating you see at the top is the average score of all of the star ratings from all of the customers. So this, is, this, this whole activity is very important to people because, you know, there's a lot of, uh, I don't want to say, substandard in the marketplace for consumers, and they should look. They should go to your bbb.org, and they, <clears throat> they should look it up and see what, what the public is saying about it. We're not <clears throat> talking about arbitration or mediation or litigation. <clears throat> We're not talking about bashing them in some public you know, place. Um, we are merely trying to get a handle on how good or bad they are. So we should go there or never go there and tell our friends to go there and never go there. Uh, and, and to me, that's, that's a very important part of what you do. Do you agree? Is this the way it's working out? Is the BBB an organization that is primarily ad addressing you know, complaints of violations of law, violations of legal duties, or is it a sort of a, a graduated thing where you're helping the public understand on a, on a, you know, sort of a graduated scale, how good or maybe not so good this particular business is. Which one is paramount for you? Actually, for us, it's always about promoting trust. So whether that is promoting businesses that meet those standards and, and do that and do what's right for the consumer, or even dealing with the complaints of it. I can't say one is more weighted than the other because ultimately it's about the consumer. So we most definitely look at it from a perspective is the consumer being protected here. And hence why we do have our, our page, you can go and look. Um, the businesses that do meet the accreditation standards and that are accredited by the Business Bureau. That tells you right then and there, we've really done a very extensive vetting process. Um, our number one industry actually to get questions on um, inquiries about is construction. Huh. People want to make sure that whoever they're hiring to work on their home has all the licensing that's required. They meet all the standards. They have the reviews. So it is our number one industry for inquiries, but it's not um, up there for complaints. And I think it's because people do look and do their background and do their due yeah. diligence. Yeah. Um, with technology these days and so much on the internet, sometimes it's hard to know where to shop. It's hard to know what review, what well, review to believe because we know there are fake reviews as we just discussed. Yeah. Um, and then we know that people are buying online and some of these websites are fake. And so people are buying things that Take they're not getting money. and they're taking their money. Yeah. So I think nowadays, even more with our technology, it's really proven how we have to know who to buy from and who we can trust. And I, that ultimately is always going to be the Better Business Bureau mission, is about the trust. Well, now, you mentioned you, you're part of a multi-state you know, Better Business Bureau organization. And we've also been talking about the internet. <clears throat> Another case study, if you will. Yesterday, I, I got on the phone with one of our suppliers here, an internet supplier, and um, a service supplier rather than a hard goods supplier. And they were, they were bad. They were really terrible, awful. I'm not going to mention their name because we don't have the time for me to mention <laughs> okay. their name. 
But, and they were, you know, who knows where they are? I know they're not here in Honolulu. Right. They're on the internet. They could be anywhere in the country or out the country, who knows? Um, if I make a complaint, if I decide, and I was thinking about it, <clears throat> that I want to complain everywhere, everywhere in the world, I want to, I want to hurt these guys for having wasted my time and, you know, give me a bad experience, <clears throat> could I go to you? I don't know where they are. They could be in Chicago, Pittsburgh, Miami, anywhere. So that's what we would get from, the, from when you would file that complaint. We'd obviously find the name of the business and then figure out where that business is located. And from there, start that dialogue. Yeah, okay, suppose they were in Florida. That's not in your district. What do you tell me, go somewhere else? <laughs> no, the BBB system as a whole, um, we work se seamlessly together. And so as long as the business is in Mexico, Canada, or US, we can handle the complaints the same exact way. And um, the advantage of this is we have resources uh, with local knowledge, right, in each office. So maybe it turns out that it, it seems like the company's in Florida. It turned out that was just a UPS address, but they're really in, I don't know, Alaska or something. And so we, we do have the... Uh, Resources to really look deep the into correspondent it. connections. Yes, and, and so you can call we, another BBB. Right, yeah. we work together, and so we we can look at each other's data to make that determination to help you. Okay, well, I mean, traditionally, a BBB must be a hundred years old anyway. Huh? It's nineteen twelve. Nineteen twelve. How close am I? Huh? Yeah, <laughs> uh, more than a hundred years old. <clears throat> yes. uh, no, less than a hundred years. By by five or five no. six years. More. More. Over. More, more. Okay. Uh -huh. Sorry. That's okay. I majored in, uh, you know, Communications. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the question is, um, you know, has it realized its mission of making business better? You talked about trust. You talked about encouraging good commerce. You know, it's a, it's a quality thing. You want to make commerce good, incentivize commerce to be good for the members of our community. Although that gets a little dicey when you're talking about my Florida company, for example, mm -hmm. uh, or my Russian company, mm -hmm. <laughs> for example. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, do you feel that you're you're reaching um, the, the same mission that you're uh, implementing the same mission that was contemplated? Uh, has the BBB grown with the nature of the economy? Size, of course, is a big deal, but the nature of the economy. Yeah? Yes. I think we have. I think if you look back at 1912, it was more just on advertising back then, just to make sure people were being truthful in advertising. And while that is still part of what we do, we've extended that beyond that. Times have changed. I think it's no more your brick and mortar stores as much as your online components. So that too has changed how we do our work as well. For us, it will always be a growing process. We will always strive to do more and do better. And we will always be learning. But I think we're most definitely still here, still strong, and probably now more than ever very relevant to the commerce yeah, good. industry. Well, talking to you, I feel that way, actually. One last question before they chop us off the air here. Okay. Suppose, hypothetically, you get a complaint from individual A about a given business, maybe an online business, and next day you get one from B, and then C, and then all through the alphabet, <laughs> and then the next alphabet, and then you realize just by a little due diligence that this is a scam. This, this guy, whoever it is, is operating in a, not only illegal but criminal fashion. He's scamming the public. Now, it would seem to me that the attorney general of the state would be interested in that because um, he doesn't know. He, he doesn't know unless we tell him. Um, but it seems that you would be a lightning rod, perhaps more than any other organization, you know, either governmental or uh, you know, or, or private business or nonprofit business, and you are nonprofit, yeah. Yes, we I are. know that because of the ORG. <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> but now you have this information that would be very interesting to the attorney general, where he could go and you know take the ball and run with it, and see if he could shut these guys down. Does this happen? Is this on your radar? Is this part of your system? Yes, it is. Um, our investigative team actually works with. Um, attorney generals, FTC also, um, depending on the case, what it is, the, the size of the concern, where it's happening. And so we, on, on a regular basis, when there's a concern, 
that sizable concern. Maybe it's the number of complaints pattern or because of the unclarity of the business and uh, they're not willing to disclose anything. Whatever the case may be, we put the information together, um, share that information with the appropriate um, regulator so they can let, uh, take a deeper look at it to take mm -hmm. action. Just as I predicted, we're being thrown off the air, Lisa. <laughs> Lisa Nagao from San Francisco. Thank you so much. It's been a trip. Thanks, you Jay. Guys. That's been great. BBB.org. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.